how to make a mind map. That's what I'm going to cover in this video. By the time you finish this video, you'll be a mind mapping ninja. So I'm going to start by explaining what a mind map actually is and why it's such a powerful tool, why it's so much more efficient than making lists. Some studies show that mind mapping can actually help memory retention by up to 15%. Then I'm going to show you how to create a mind map. I'll give you three examples showing you how to mind map your life, your shopping list and anything else. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to take your mind mapping to the next level. And I'll throw in some free training too. You'll find links and timestamps to everything I mentioned in the description so you can click and go to a section if you need a recap. All you need is here, the why, the how, the tools, the training. So let's do this. The first question really is, what is a mind map? A mind map is a collection of thoughts. Now at this point, you could say, well, that's the same as a to-do list. And in a way it is, but here's the difference. A to-do list or any type of list is a linear thought process. Every item comes after another item. And here's the thing, we don't think in a linear fashion. Our thoughts are more like explosions of thoughts branching out in every way. And that's where mind mapping comes in. Mind maps are usually a better way to capture thoughts. And the term mind mapping itself means to map your mind, to map your thoughts. So that's the theory over with. Now let's get on with the action. Okay, so here I have a blank screen. This represents a blank piece of paper. By the way, you can mind map on paper or you can mind map using a tool. And I'll talk about that later in this video. I use both methods, by the way, if I want to capture some thoughts, I'll start mind mapping on paper. But the only drawback is that I change my mind very often and I end up crossing out a lot of things on the piece of paper. And that's where software makes this process a lot easier. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's step back and look at the action. We start by drawing a shape in the middle of the paper. Now you could draw a circle, but keep in mind that we have to write inside these shapes. So a circle is not really the best shape. I stick to this shape. Now this is going to be our central topic. So let's call it the thing. This is the thing that we want to mind map about. Okay, so now that you have your central topic down, you just let your mind do its thing. Let the thoughts come and write down all the thoughts that are related to the thing. So let's say, for example, you needed to go and buy some clothes. Clothes shopping would be the thing that would be the central topic. Your mind would then fill up with thoughts about all the things you need to buy. For example, you might think jeans, a t-shirt, shoes, a jacket, and so on. Those are the thoughts that we want to capture at this stage. So I'm going to draw another shape and I'm going to call that area one. This first shape could be jeans. Then I'm going to draw another shape to capture my next thought. This one, for example, could be t-shirt. Then I'm going to capture the next thought. Let's say this one is shoes. And I'm going to repeat the process as many times as I need to. Every time a thought pops into my head about the thing that I'm trying to achieve, I'm going to record it on my piece of paper. When you have all your thoughts in front of you, just link them. Everything is linked or branching out from the thing. Next, we're going to think about each area and see what thoughts come up. So for example, if area one was jeans, then maybe we want to buy a pair of black jeans and a pair of blue jeans. So I would draw two shapes and I would write in there blue jeans, black jeans. I'm writing item and area here to demonstrate that this can be used for anything. Then you just repeat the process for every thought. And what you're doing here is you are creating sub thoughts or sub areas of those main areas. And of course, you link them all together because all those thoughts are linked. And when you run out of thoughts, then you have your mind map completed. And you can see the difference between a mind map and a to-do list. When you create a to-do list or a list of any sort, you are writing in a linear process, but your thoughts are not linear. The whole point of mind mapping is that you don't lose any of those thoughts. You can capture them quickly by simply adding that thought to the corresponding area or category. And this is why mind mapping is very effective. So let's look at a practical example now. Let's see how to mind map your life. Imagine that you want to create a mind map that encapsulates where you want to go with your life in the next few years. Remember, it's all about capturing those thoughts. So once again, we're going to start with a central topic. And since you're going to map out your life, then my life would be a good name for the central topic. Then we'll create a bubble called career. 
Next, we'll draw a bubble for relationships. And next, we'll draw a bubble for money. Now note that these are not in any particular order. With a mind map, there is no up or down and there is no left or right. Just like the thoughts in your head, they don't usually have a beginning and an end. So let's go ahead and draw another shape for goals and another one for travel and another one for health. So all these bubbles represent different aspects of your life that you want to map out. Each one is as important as the next. Okay, so next we're going to link all those thoughts. And next we're going to focus on one of the bubbles. Let's say, for example, career. And we're going to let the mind do its thing. And your job is simply to sit still, listen and capture those thoughts as they come out. And you do that for each one of these bubbles. And by the way, these bubbles in mind mapping terms are usually called nodes. Okay, so let's go ahead and capture some thoughts. You can see that on the career, I have come up with training and jobs. This is an example, of course, but let's say somebody wanted to have a career and the thought process could have been, I need to get some training first and then I need to start applying for jobs. And that's what that represents. Then for relationships, we can have love and friends. Then for money, we can have debt and savings. And of course, you can add as many nodes or sub nodes as you want. For example, on the money, you could have investments and on the debt, you could list all the types of debt that you have. And if you choose to work with your mind map on an ongoing basis, you can actually cross out those bubbles as and when you accomplish them. For goals, I added two goals. You can add as many as you want and you can break down those goals into as many nodes or sub nodes as you want. For travel, I added two nodes, this year and next year. You may be more focused on travel, so this may be a bigger node for you. Then for health, I added two things, diet and exercise. You'll note that I've added two examples for each main node. And that is just to show you how to create a mind map and keep it simple at the same time. But of course, you can focus on any of those areas or those nodes, like training, for example, and ask yourself, what types of training do I want or do I need? And you can expand that node into a lot more nodes. Your mind map really is infinite. You can keep going, mapping out your thoughts for as long as you want. Now let's look at one final practical example. Let's wipe this out and start with our shape and call this one shop. I wanted to do this example to really show the difference between a mind map versus a to-do list. So let's use an example shopping list to create our mind map. Here you'll see fruit, veg, dairy, frozen, meat and bakery. Now what we're doing here is we are separating the categories of food that we want to buy. It's very annoying to find items on your shopping list that are at the other end of the supermarket where you were two minutes ago. So creating a mind map instead of a to-do list will help you deal with that. So following the process we looked at before, you would think about what kinds of fruit you want to buy, what kinds of veg, what kinds of dairy, etc. and capture all those thoughts like this. So here we have apples and bananas for fruit, tomatoes and onions for veg, cheese and yogurt for dairy, and so on. You get the point. You can see why mind mapping is so powerful and effective. Now for the bonus I promised. If you want to take your mind mapping to the next level, then swap pen and paper for software. There are plenty of mind mapping tools, many of which are free. And you can get started with my free mind mapping tool, which is right here, and my free training, which is right there. I'll see you in the next video.